It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy Anako, Renee Ritchie are here. We're going to talk about the latest iPhone rumors. Apple buys a new low-powered chip company. Uh, no Google Talk at all. Well, coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mac Break Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 362, recorded August 6th, 2013. The S is for speculation. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Squarespace, the all in one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off, visit squarespace.com and use the offer code MACBREAK8. And by audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash MACBREAK. It's time for MACBREAK Weekly, the show that covers your Macintosh news and Apple news and all that stuff in your Google Glass, if we throw it in, that's okay, too. Here's Andy Anatko, who is not wearing glass, but does have three strange people behind him. <laughs> no, I was, I was at the Boston Comic-Con uh, last weekend. Lots of great I, I had, pictures coming out of you from Comic-Con last weekend. Oh, God, and the Boston Comic-Con gets bigger and better every year. But this is so, uh, this most, one of my goals, like, at Comic-Con is to get, like, great pictures of, of people in costume. And I was outside getting some fresh air. And when you see three people in blue face makeup, and they're sitting, they're relaxing, they're just chilling out. But you see that, oh, there's a blue background. They look great in front of. I have to sit here. I have to stand here and nonchalantly finish my soda and hope that they get up at some point. Because as soon as they get up, I got to have them pose in front That's of That's a great photographer. Somebody who waits for the perfect shot. Well, a great photographer would say, excuse me, uh, I want you, you to up? get up right now and on my convenience and my schedule and do exactly my bidding so I could take your picture and then take your, because you're on a public sidewalk, I don't need a model release and I can do whatever I want with it. Can I ask, though, uh, being not being of the um, otaku uh, variety, <laughs> is the blue signifying something? Are they avatar or something? Uh, the blue and the uh, the the candy corn uh, horn signify that they are representing some form of anime character that I recognize <laughs> on site, but have no idea who exactly they are. I don't get it at all. Cosplay I have, no, I, is. I, I have I have I have total respect for it because there's there's like five different categories of cosplay at cons. Since I have almost no familiarity with anime, I, there's there's like the maybe the eight characters I recognize. Oh, it's. The guy with the white spiky hair that carries the enormous key that's three feet long and one feet high. Oh, no, it's 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 the lady with the bridal veil, but the tuxedo bottom part and the tutu and the giraffe hoof shoes that I see all the time. But I, I shouldn't know. That's a distinctive look that I should be able to attach him. So uh, Am, uh, John says his neighbor Amber's into Homestuck and says that's stuck, Homestuck. But then Patrick, who is, in fact, cosplaying right now, <laughs> says it's not. So I don't know. Well, we have we have a choice between that that I selected for today and it is Homestuck. Okay, it's or Homestuck. Uh, the Tuscan Raiders. I got the there Green go. Lady. Oh wow, that's Jabba the Hutt. Is that somebody dressed that was, as Jabba the Hutt? That is a like several person. Come on, zoom out, zoom out. You're being mean. While Andy's zooming out, let's just say hi because poor Renee's sitting there quietly. Right, Renee that. Richie is also <laughs> here. Uh, hi, Leo. What the hell's <laughs> You got a giant Twitter behind you. That's yeah, that's Ollie, the Twitterific bird, and the very first edition of Twitterific back when it was still jailbreak. Ah, the good days. Yeah. Renee Ritchie from iMore.com. Hello, gentlemen. Mac Break Weekly on the air. Andy's still oh now he's zoomed out. No, wow, that's I'm pretty serious, those guys. Yeah, they're they're really wonderful. The, the 501st Legion, and they also teamed up with the their counterparts on the Sith side to do like <laughs> charity at, at this event. They normally have different like cadres at uh, Boston Comic Con, but it's like here we are we are they're charity driven, and by all means, have your picture taken with us. We also have someone who is going to be if you want to press a few dollars in their hands, they will that those, that money will go to a children's charity. They like children's charity. We had the they, 501st they, on uh, screensavers many moons ago, but they were just stormtroopers at the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they've, they've branched out. <laughs> you you make them sound as though it's like so there's like there's like larva, then like cocoon, and then <laughs> now they've emerged. Evolution of or, 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 or maybe more like Pokemon. There's like the third generation. 
Charmander. That's what I want. The evolution of cosplay. That would be a YouTube hit. So, um, what what uh, camera do you use these with these? Uh, this one is, I think, I think that's actually the Lumia 1020. Did you have it in your pocket the whole time? And yeah, yeah, it was. I was shooting so much with it that I had to remind myself, uh, Andy, you do have a compact Micro Four Thirds real camera at your hip that you could possibly be taking pictures with. Uh, that would be taking better pictures right now. But uh, the Lumia was doing such a good job for most of the event. It was like, okay, people would be might be less intimidated by a, another another dude with a phone camera as opposed to a, excuse me, love, I want to wet your bottom lip a little bit, purse your left lip a <laughs> little bit more. I want some flair on the cape, and remember, energy now. Three, two, one. <laughs> So we're here to talk about Macintoshes, but uh, you know I have to I have to uh, I don't know apologize or explain because we uh, especially after last week's episode where we spent some time talking about Google and uh, what Google was up to, people seem to get a little irate saying you know you should only talk about Macintoshes on the show or Apple on the show. You should not talk about anything else. And I and I th I thought about that a little bit and I, I realized it was a kind of a misunderstanding, and that uh, people think we're Lord of the Rings and we're really Game of Thrones. And what I, what I mean by that is there's two ways you can go with this kind of stuff. Journalists, of course, tell stories. What We take fact. This is what the show is about, right? We take facts and we uh, put them, sew them together to make a, what we believe to be an accurate and coherent story. Um, then there are other kinds of shows that do mythology. And uh, we don't do, we're not, we're not into mythology. And that's why I say Lord of the Rings versus Game of Thrones. You know, if, if, if you think you're reading Lord of the Rings... And somebody says something and it, and it scares you or upsets you that you might say, well, wait a minute. I, I thought I was reading mythology. If you're reading Game of Thrones, which is loosely based on actual history, you know, which reading history and, and uh, Richard III brings the two little boys up in the tower and slits their throats, it's history. You don't get upset. If you're reading a novel and the same thing happens at a wedding, some people get upset. But that's because you don't understand that George R.R. R. Martin is kind of more on the historical side than the mythos side. So I would say we're trying to tell a coherent story, but a coherent story that is, is, in our opinion, an accurate, and we certainly debate all of this stuff, but an accurate reflection of what's going on in the world around us. If you are looking for mythos about Apple, you got the wrong podcast. And I can understand you're upset if, yeah. you know, you're reading Game of Thrones and you thought you were reading Lord of Rings. So I, I prefer... I prefer to think of it like we are, uh, we're like doing the entire weather system of Apple, which involves the earth and the sun and the atmosphere. And some things are not the, you know, if the apple is the earth, the the earth is surrounded by atmosphere and Google is part of that atmosphere. So yeah. we'll talk about Google, but only as it relates to people like us who really dig Apple and spend most of our time running Apple products. And I, and I don't say that, I'm not trying to uh, apologize. Uh, I'm trying to explain so that you know what it is that you are listening to. I have that silly uh, French train station boop now on my Apple. Um, <laughs> Excel, <laughs> excellent, Leo. C'est très bien. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so I just want you to know that that's not kind of what we're doing here. This is intended to be, how, for you know, better or worse, uh, whether we succeed or fail, to be a journalistic enterprise in which we cover technology, uh, trying to understand it. And you're right, absolutely, Andy. There's a universe uh, We're not being called fanboys and haters in the same show, Leo. We're just, we shouldn't have showed up that day. <laughs> um, I have been, by the way. <laughs> I've that's fulfilled you both know you've roles. Done it right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, that's the he said, she said journalism that CNN and, uh, is doing lately uh, where, hey, there, there are two sides of the story. As long as we tell both sides, uh, then we're okay. We're not doing that either. We actually are trying to figure out what's true, what's right. And uh, that may not, you know, one of the reasons this came into my mind is the Jobs movie, which is coming out. Have either of you seen that yet? <laughs> no. I saw parts of it at Macworld. It's going to be... Now, well, see, this will be interesting because it is... Is it Mythos? Yeah. You'd be crazy to make a Jobs movie that wasn't. I mean, The Social Network's a good example of that. That was a fairy tale about Facebook. It wasn't what really happened. I presume yeah. Jobs will be like that. Well, that's, if that's, I remember correctly, they, the part they showed at Macworld was Steve Jobs telling Waz what a computer was. Which, yeah, yeah, that was kind of set the stage. And, 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 and apparently was dressing up like Weird Al Yankovic in a, in a necktie in 1976. <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't man. think Jobs is, I mean, Waz has ever worn a necktie, ever. Uh, no, at HP, there is, I think I've seen pictures of him in inappropriately like mid 70s, like, you know, big fat uh, wide tie. New, well, like, like a newly hired, like Apollo right. 17 controller <laughs> sort of outfit, short sleeve dress shirt, like nice fat striped tie. 
But yeah, I mean, that's, I, I'm looking. I'm more looking forward to Aaron Sorkin's take on it, which it doesn't try to set up the entire young boy Edison storyline, but mostly says here are a, a few key keynotes that he delivered and the events that surrounded it at different portions of his career at Apple. And so that that will hopefully tell you the tale of who a little bit about who Steve Jobs was. I got. I mean, I have my prejudices. I, I've seen the trailer and my problem with Ashton Kutcher is that I don't believe I don't mean I don't mean this in a funny way or an attacking way it's just that I I don't believe he's noted for a very wide range of emotions <laughs> and so I'm just not sure that if there has there has to be a scene of Steve being upset with somebody and conveying that in a very dramatic way I'm not sure if I see that coming from Ashton Kutcher but I just wish I, it would come out already I mean I've, we've been watching the trailers since Macworld yeah. not this year but the year before and I every know. every time I get a news tip about another trailer, I, I don't even want to publish them anymore. Just yeah, get the movie out already. Well, there is... Okay, so there is a new trailer. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take it, Leo. <laughs> one, one more, Can one more. Pokes up to the TV for the display. Uh, Steve? Wow. Welcome to Apple Computer. It's gonna be so cool. He's just a kid. Is that Steve, you're just a kid. Startup. You expecting something else? Maybe something a little less Manson family. He's got the look. I'll give him that. Hey, Steve. What's going on? Steve, you're on the Macintosh team. What's a Macintosh? See, this kind of makes He's me want to see it. Start a war with IBM. Return of the Mac. Return of the Mac. The Mac. The Mac. The Mac. The Mac. The Mac. Y'all can't stop me. I'm trying to build an Apple, and they're taking it away from me. You are your own worst enemy, and this company's. <laughs> when you grow up, you tend to get told the world is the way that it is. You want to get back what you lost? This is the time. I never lost it. Stolen. Look at that. That's the later Steve. That's pretty good. Life can be much more. We're criticizing his later Steve. I thought it was good. Steve. You can embrace it, change it. You refuse to do anything that vaguely escapes your comfort zone. Improve it. Make your mark upon it. Uh -huh. The choice of Baba O'Reilly is a little odd, but uh, I think he was more into Dylan than the Who. Yeah. I, I, it bothers me they're kind of amping up the legend as opposed to oh, all. This, I mean, this, it's. I think he's more inspirational as a person than as you know. I'd I'd I'd, I'd rather see him at life size than at her at heroic scale. Uh, yeah, maybe. But I I mean, remember the audience. You're not aiming for people who knew him or people who followed him closely. You're aiming for the general broad general public, and they want to yeah. see King Arthur. Well, it's, it's a way to get in a, get a, get like a 2.8 share in Lifetime, but not a good way to make a <laughs> That's a what movie somebody that else said in the chat room. It's a movie of the week. Of, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I just, don't know. I, I have to say I was very uh, down on this movie from what I'd seen before. Um, this one kind of gets me. See, I, I don't, I'm going to the movies. I don't mind if it's, you know, yeah, I can't, a I mean, hero. I, I, absolutely not judging a movie I haven't seen yet. You know, Tony I'm, Stark I'm, really, when you get to know him, was not the man uh, <laughs> that, that's portrayed in the movie. I think it's very important to understand that. It's kind of a dick. No, I'm well, just played. well played. Well yeah. played. <laughs> this is the Tony not, Stark version of Steve Jobs. You're not you're not going to you're not going to hear me defend any movie re any mo movie representation of any Marvel character. That's, <laughs> I, I I I think of the Marvel movies the way that I think of like this the the Star Wars books that they're fan fiction. <laughs> they didn't really happen. Yeah. There. yeah. If it happened in the movies, and that's real canonical things that I need to care about. If it's <laughs> fan a, fiction. Book, as, as good as the movies are, as the Marvel movies are, as good as the books are, it, they don't register to me as, well, it's okay that I don't think they got that right because, look, I still have the comics. That's fine. So far, 43% in Rotten Tomatoes, which is a very low, that's a splat. Uh, but, but who? But who like, how many people have actually right. seen it? It's not in wide release. Reiterating. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. As, as as with any movie, you hope that you, you don't go into a movie theater hoping to see a bad movie. You go into a movie theater hoping to see a good movie. I'll, I'll definitely be seeing it. I, be you know, I was it. I was saying I'm not going to see that. That sounds horrible. Until I saw this trailer, and then I went, oh. You, you know, I, if I it, get Leo. chills a few times through the movie, going yeah, and there was a few points when he said, for instance, uh, you know, uh, you got to get out of your comfort zone. There are a few points. You're now on the Mac team. What's a Mac? I got kind of chills. It was like, yeah. So um, if I feel that way when I come out of the movie, even if though you and I will, we'll all we'll go because oh, that was so wrong. 
yeah, that's we're, we may not be the right people to judge it. Right. That's, that's how I felt about the Watchmen movie, for instance. When I have, since I have such a close knowledge of the source material, I don't know if this makes sense to anybody else. I don't know if it's something that might bother me, nobody else would care about. So that, I think there's, I think there's going to have to be like, ast like starred or asterisk reviews. Right. Saying, okay. Did you you have you are you in the tech industry at all? Okay, then we get to we, we, your opinion, your thoughts still matter, but we'll put this on the side to make sure that right. people don't say, oh, "Come on!" <laughs> First of all, negotiations with Motorola on the sixty-eight thousand processor were not initiated <laughs> in the seventies. They were still on. Okay, it's, it's, it's a, you know they haven't even moved on to risk yet. Come on. <laughs> I used to go to movies with a friend of mine who was a mechanic, and he would always criticize that you know that car just can't turn a corner like that. Well, it all depends on what you know about i think yeah. we we did that with the social network um you know if taken by itself it was a great movie but taken with any knowledge at all of what really happened it was like come on and uh but it was again it was that myth making thing and i'm sure i have to tell you andy don't sorkin's gonna make uh you know waz and jobs and the whole gang be fast talking fast walking you know <laughs> razzmatazz guys okay, but, six but and ten and pick them but, but but if you're, if you're gonna talk about sorkin this is the this jobs must be like the perfect subject for him because he's probably the only person other than President Bartlett that if he rattles mm. off statistics down to three decimal places yeah. off the top of his head, you imagine that. No, I I don't think that an associate news producer on a cable news network would know that. I do think that Steve Jobs would know that 12.1415 students percent right. of all students in the North American continent since 1983 <laughs> have, have not touched a computer more than three hours a three hours a day since 1978. I, I think that. Yeah, I think that he that's can true. Things. I do relish the the uh, Sorkin interpretation of uh, Steve. <laughs> Just Jones. for the dialogue. Yeah, the dialogue will be great. But uh, so I am going to go see this. You're, you, you know, you're right. I feel, uh, 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 Renee, you have to see it. You, uh, we have to see it. But but I really was resisting it, especially because uh, the pre the portrait of Waz seemed somewhat insulting, uh, and yes. Waz himself felt insulted by it. You know, when he saw the trailer, especially, in the, the especially in the first trailer that hit, yeah. where the, the yeah. one in the parking garage, where you're like. I'm not sure that Waz needed to be taught about what a com personal computer was. I'm. I think that he kind of had a handle on it. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. It was the other way around, obviously. But yeah, yeah. It's, gonna, gonna, it's gonna make for some great viewing parties, one way or another, though. <laughs> I mean, this is this is. I'm not. I, I'm serious. It's, it's, I, I hope to go with like four or five friends who will, you know, will be able to have the same sort of reaction and view it in the same way that I am. So I don't feel like one person who. Has to like like the time that I saw the movie Hackers <laughs> in a screening room with like professional movie critics, oh. and I had to stifle like every reaction I had to everything that was happening because my reactions were both logical but abnormal for a typical audience. So it's I, coming I, I, in over I, I, the I, RSS, Andy. It's coming in over the RSS. Web ninety six oh. fourteen. Our chat room says there should be a movie Was. I wouldn't mind seeing that. That would yeah. be that would be a more interesting movie. Yeah. So uh, last week we uh, speculated that Bob Mansfield had uh, stepped down from the executive team to work on the iWatch. Now Mark Gurman at 9 to 5, Mac writes, and I think Mark's pretty well placed, that his sources say, no, he's going to focus on chipset design uh, plus future products. Um, does this change, uh, Renee, what you think Bob Mansfield is up to? You remember he was senior vice president of technologies, suddenly a week ago taken off the Apple executive uh, team. Uh, not much explanation from Apple. Dan no, Riccio stepping up. All. No, um, no. I mean, Mark's got fantastic sources, but I think he just he heard similar to what a lot of other people heard, and he just managed to get a lot of details on it, which are important. But I think you know the chipsets and all the stuff he's working on. There's going to be chipsets in the iWatch. There's going to be chipsets in. Uh, there's going to be an Apple A7 processor, and I think it's all part and parcel of where he wants to focus his his energy. Um, you know, he was basically told he could write his own ticket, and that's the ticket he wanted to write. Yeah, I mean, it, Mark writes, as a wealthy, longtime executive at Apple, <laughs> who, and wealthy is the right word, I, what was it, $85 million they gave him to stick around a couple extra years? Uh, um, it sounds like, though, uh, he's not going to run the iWatch team, that he's going to be no. working on chipsets or chips, that some of which may appear in the iWatch. He's, he's going to be part of it, but not running the team. Um, it's funny because... Uh, According to us, this is Mark again writing in 9 to 5 Mac. According to a source familiar with the former technologies team, there's been a lack of formal internal communication regarding the reasoning behind the management shift. However, the company did make the new executive roles clear to these employees, and I presume that's where Mark's getting this information. Even with a lack of communication, 
Uh, sources say the change is not unprecedented. Over the past couple of months, Mansfield is said to have been increasingly focused on chips and some aspects of wireless while get delegating his other teams uh, to other executives. Sources with knowledge of Mansfield's line of thinking also say the executive would very much like to retire on his new California Coast castle. <laughs> I would Wouldn't like we to all, Leo? We all? <laughs> I would like to retire so, on my new California Coast. Apparently he's a, has a uh, wants to build a 9,000 square foot home. He owns 45 acres uh, in Bonnie Dune, which I've been to. A uh, beautiful, beautiful area up there in the in the Santa Cruz Mountains. There's not much going on up there. Um, but uh, he's got the money, goodness knows, to build a castle in Bonnie Dune. Also, I, I've always thought that Northern California was underprotected by sea assault uh, from, <laughs> like, 1730s-style galleons. Well, Bonnie Dune's cannons, way up in the hills. You, but I guess if you had good long-range cannon, you are overlooking the Santa Cruz Harbor, so you could protect it. Uh, there's actually a lot of uh, battle going on over this. According to the Santa Cruz Sentinel, the uh, local community is not thrilled about the castle. <laughs> um, but it can defend the city. <laughs> the home would sit atop an old quarry that one neighborhood historian... Oh, this is this is Santa Cruz in, in a nutshell. I went to high school there. One neighborhood historian believes uh, that provided the asphalt to pave downtown Pacific Avenue as well as San Francisco's Market Street. I do not believe that quarry should be disturbed. <laughs> no, no, th no. The reason why he's fighting for this, if if he's anything like the people who use the Quincy uh, quarry here in New England, it's because at one point they pushed a car into that quarry, let it sit down, and got the insurance money. There are a lot of people who do not want that drain. <laughs> it would they be a shame if it were to be drained. <laughs> That's where Jimmy Hoffa is. The majesty of the surroundings is just out. This is the Santa Cruz Sentinel. It's just outside the northern border of Wilder State Ranch Park is matched by the architectural plans. I've been there. I'm telling you, it is gorgeous. It's redwoods. It's very remote. It's a very long, twisty road to get up there. The 9,000 square foot home, about 6,000 square feet of which is above grade. What does that mean? Looking down? What is it? They're saying 3,000 feet is in the mountain? Includes a basement theater... And an agricultural roof. <laughs> and probably its own chip foundry. Four barns, an outdoor kitchen, a potting shed, even a herd of goats. Hey, don't knock the goats. If you live in a place like Bonnie Dune, you need something to eat the poison ivy. What? So I, I don't blame Bob Mansfield for wanting to go to his castle. Uh, even with that in mind, these people, according to Mark Gurman, believe Mansfield will never fully separate himself from Apple. Bonnie Dune is close to Apple. You could get to Apple in about 45 minutes from Bonnie Dune. Um, e uh, even uh, the executives dedicated to the company would like to contribute to Apple in some fashion, even in retirement, these people say. Mansfield really has the entire company's best interests at heart. That's got to be tough when you're at a company, you love this company, but you also have $85 million in your pocket. And you just feel done. Yeah. And oh, but but if, if, if that were important to you, wouldn't you have stopped at $20 million? <laughs> No, I mean, at, 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 at some point, at some, at no, you're some right. There's point. some. Point. It's a castle, Andy. A castle. <laughs> Unless, it's not cheap to build a castle. <laughs> I guess. Well, maybe, maybe is or is this like a look at like the the, the changing face of, of of you know screw you money that if you've got <laughs> three or four million dollars you can't be stupid with it or else at some point you will not be rich anymore. You'll be secure for the rest of your life, but you will no longer be able to just pack up and go to London for an ice cream and then come back. $85 million is definitely, I would have to be very drunk for a very long time in order to, at any point, not have more money than I ever know what to deal with. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a lot that, of you could, buy a, that's, yeah, you could buy a Gulfstream and still have money left over. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it's, that, that's why I'm, I'm always impressed with decisions like this one that seem to be very much on what kind of, based on what kind of life do I want to live at this point in my life. Right. Because this is not, Mansfield is not someone who has had the spotlight, so... If he wanted to spotlight another company, he could have had it. He did not want it. Uh, he clearly was not motivated by anything more than what direction he wants to wants to follow, uh, or else he would have really. Uh, it's it, it just it just seems like a, a a question of personal judgment and a person personal character, the sort of thing that really impresses me. When when I, when I see that kind of the idea where someone was offered a huge amount of money to stay at the company they were at. If unless there was another offer on the table that was out that this their original employer outbid them, that usually means that 
okay, there is some uh, intangibles that have nothing to do with money, but at some point, the ability to finance a feature film <laughs> that I uh, buy, buy the film rights to my favorite book and have a decent budget film made out of it based on the fact that I can simply stay at this job that I really like for a couple more years. That's an interesting, yeah. interesting position to be in. If you leave now, you can have a small fort or a keep, but if you stay for another <laughs> two years, you can have the castle. <laughs> And also, I mean, 45 minutes, you know, this, it's a lot less given the system of pneumatic tubes underground that he's laying in with all that money. You could have a hyperloop to Apple's campus. <laughs> how, many newspaper, how many newspapers does that buy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He could buy the Washington Post. No, he couldn't. That was a quarter of a billion. He could buy the Boston Globe, though. <laughs> the Globe's cheap. Uh, I'm sorry, Andy. You're no. still working for a, 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 one of America's last great newspapers, the Chicago Sun-Times. <laughs> Do the Wrigley family still own that? Who owns that? I have no idea. I don't own it. <laughs> not Andy. That's all I know. I have no idea. Well, who signs check, the keep, check, check, Andy? It's <laughs> <laughs> never know. Gustav Sun-Times, the, the third Skyon of the Sun-Times family. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that uh, I heard that the Sun-Times were up for sale, but I, I shouldn't really belabor that. You probably... I should I should check my sofa cushion. Mm -hmm. and put in a bit. Mm -hmm. of we don't want to. Uh, we don't want to scare Andy or anything. All right, we're going to talk about uh, Apple has friends in high places, like the White House. We'll talk about that in uh, just a little bit. Um, also, the uh, strong rumors, and I know you'll have a lot to say about this, Renee Ritchie, being the man of rumor, uh, the A7 chip, and what the new iPhone. We're getting close now. Mm -hmm. You think we're as close as a month? away from the new iPhone, early September? I don't know about early, but September-ish sounds reasonable. I just want to let Apple know, and I know they care a lot about my personal convenience, that I will be leaving the country on September 17th. So if you could have that event before Ouch. then, that would be nice. What? Nothing. What do you know, Andy? Are you saying, are you know something and you're not saying it? Look at that. Uh, I, I know nothing that I'm not saying it. <laughs> Just to be, I know, no, know nothing and say it, but sometimes I feel I, I feel like when there are these pauses of nothing happening in the show, it, it allows the audience to get into a more contemplative mood. Exactly. I'd be surprised if Andy had a lot of engagements during September or October in general. Yeah, any you, year. Yeah, if you're an Apple journalist, you pretty much want to keep those months clear. Uh, yeah, there was there was that time where I, uh, I I agreed to speak to a user group for free on the same week. Like on their like big anniversary event on the year on it happened to be the day that they announced something as uh, one of the new iP iPhones <sighs> or iPods or something, right. and I decided after a lot of soul searching that I think the cooler thing to do would be to simply keep the date and <laughs> and at least they know that I have something I would definitely have something to talk about as opposed to. <laughs> Lunchman says the gift card promo for students and September sixth. So he. He is of the opinion mm. September 7th will be the release date. <laughs> uh, I don't no, know. Yeah, no, no correlation. I don't, I, usually that means just that's when people are in school by then. And yeah. I know I have to pay Henry's tuition, college tuition, by September 4th. So I think that that's a reasonable day. We're going to take a break. We'll come back more with Renee Ritchie, imore.com. Uh, uh, I was going to say Alex Lindsay, but he's not here, is he? Was he going to be here? No, no. Uh, well, what country I, is he in now? I actually think he's in America. Wow! I think. Um, but I, I believe that he had a, a conflict of of shooting. Yeah, he had to do something. That's Chad Johnson, our producer, and of course Andy Anaco from the Chicago Sun Times. Our show today brought to you by our friends at Squarespace.com. We're going to ask you to tweet some more. Actually, you know, I should look back at the uh, tweets from last week. If you have a Squarespace site and you'd like us to uh, highlight it, send out a tweet with the uh, hashtag uh, MacBreakSquarespace. Mac break square space. I don't think we've done this on. We did it on Twit, didn't we? We didn't do it on Mac break. So uh, tweet away and we'll highlight before the uh, end of the day some of those sites and maybe later on too. What is Squarespace? Golly, you must be new to the show. Squarespace is the best web hosting, the best web content management system merged into one to make a unified platform that is perfect for your next website. If it's a blog, couldn't be better for blogging. Their iPad, iPhone apps are so beautiful, so easy to use. In fact, they have such good mobile developers, they've released other apps like the Squarespace Notes app because uh, it's just gorgeous. Uh, if you are a, an artist, a photographer, a painter, a sculptor, an architect, the portfolio templates they have are spectacular. If you want to do commerce, somebody called me up and said, oh, I hear Squarespace doesn't do uh, e-commerce. What are you talking about? 
Oh, oh man, does Squarespace do commerce? Look at there's people selling ties. Graham Withers sells ties. And it is the easiest, simplest way to set up commerce with all the features you want, including tax calculations, uh, shipping, um, inventory, digital, uh, unlimited digital or physical products. And the, uh, I'll, when I tell you the price, you're going to say it's not even possible. Take a look at the Here's what you should probably do. Go to squarespace.com and play with it. They give you two weeks. You don't even need to give them a credit card or anything. You could just try it, you know, totally free for two weeks. You'll start by picking a template, and that's actually maybe the hardest part because they're gorgeous. But here's the good news. Once you import your content into that template, you can change templates at will as with, you know, the best web designs. The content and the design are completely separate. You don't need to be a master of web design either. All you need to do is have an eye for what you want. You start with those beautiful templates. Make it your own. If you know CSS, JavaScript, you know, you, they do have a great developer platform, but it's not necessary. A wonderful support team, 24-7, and you'll have access to them even during the free trial. Two weeks free at Squarespace. Just click the uh, Try It button and uh, Get Started button, and you'll be able to get in there. Now, if you decide to buy, wow, you're going to just flip your lid. Go ahead and show the price. They won't, they won't believe it. So basic, now these are annual prices. You can't go month to month. It's a little bit more month to month. But for a standard plan, $8 a month. For the unlimited plan, that's what most people do, $16 a month. What do you get? Unlimited everything, unlimited uh, bandwidth. You'll never get a bandwidth bill. That's unheard of. Even with our big fancy servers that we run over at SoftLayer, they have a limit on bandwidth. Unlimited storage, unlimited pages, unlimited galleries, unlimited blogs, unlimited contributors. This is 16 bucks bucks a month. When you sign up for the uh, year long um, plan, you get it's 16 bucks a month, 20 bucks month to month. But do get the year long plan for a couple of reasons. First of all, because they will free give you a free domain name registration and they'll hook it all up for you. The other reason is we're going to give you a 10% discount on your first purchase. So that means you'll save even more. 10% off when you use the offer code MACBREAK8. E commerce is 24 bucks a month. And that's everything. Unlimited. They don't take a cut of your sales or anything. I mean, it's just, I love Squarespace. You want to try it? Please. For two weeks. Mobile responsive design means it looks great on every size screen. SEO optimized. Complete uh, integration with all the social networks. Squarespace.com. Our offer code for the month of August is MACBREAK8. Please remember that and use it if you can when you buy. That way we get a little bit of a, a bump. Actually, we get paid this. It doesn't give us... I should explain that. I think sometimes people say, oh, they, you get paid per sign-up. No, we don't. We get the same amount. But then Squarespace knows that, oh, people listen to Mac Break. And we would like them to think that. So <laughs> let's, let's all fool them. Andy Anako, Renee Ritchie, we're talking about uh, Macintosh, Apple. They must have friends in high places. So now this is a complicated story. And I've been doing a lot of reading around it, this patent story. So... Um, First of all, you may be fooled by the name International Trade Commission. It isn't. It's the United States International Trade Commission. Samsung, instead of suing in court over a patent infringement, went to the ITC. And it turns out a lot of companies are starting to do this. It's much faster. It's much simpler. And the ITC, and they requested a ban on five Apple devices. The patent was um, a, what we call a FRAND patent that is a basic patent that the general trade law requires a company make available for licensing under FRAND terms fair reasonable and non-discriminatory in other words a, a kind of a, a reasonable licensing um, Apple got or rather a Samsung got the ITC to agree to ban the iPhone 4 the 3GS the iPad 2, five different Apple products. And as of Monday, they could have no longer be imported into the United States. Um, but Apple got a reprieve. It's almost like you're in the electric chair and a call comes in from the governor and says, okay, over the weekend, uh, President Obama signed a uh, reprieve. Now, it came from, the presidential veto, it came from uh, one of the ITC's six commissioners who... The federal trade representative. Right, who said, no, this was wrong. Uh, Samsung made no effort to demonstrate that the licensing terms it offered Apple were objectively reasonable. 
They were they were supposed to be Fran, remember? The only time Samsung made an offer, which was in oral discussions in December 2012, it came with strings attached, which Apple could not agree. Obviously, Apple went to this guy and said, look, let's lay out the case for why this shouldn't be banned. Uh, we don't know what the strings were because they were redacted. But in the uh, opinion, he writes, it is neither fair nor discriminatory for the holder of the Fran encumbered patent, Samsung, to require licensees to non Fran encumbered patents, such as as a condition for licensing its patent, from which you can assume that what Samsung said is, OK, we'll license this patent. Nobody disagrees, by the way, that App that Samsung has the license and Apple needs to uh, Samsung has a patent and Apple needs to license it. That seems to be generally agreed to. Yep. But it sounds like what Samsung said was two things. One, we want a lot of money. And more importantly, two, we'll give you this patent as long as you drop these other suits or you allow us a license fee for rubber banding or whatever it was. Um, Florian Mueller, who's uh, the uh, author of Foss Patents, um, <laughs> said, I'm outraged. The underlying rationale of the ITC ruling, this was the first ruling, the ban, is a serious threat to innovation and competition. Among other things, it represents a radical departure from well-established antitrust principles concerning the illegal practice of tying, in this case, the Samsung proposal that required Apple to license non-standard essential patents to Samsung in order to get the Frand license, runs totally counter to the ITC's mission to protect the domestic industry. And uh, on Saturday, the Obama administration agreed and vetoed... Uh, the um, the uh, ban. Some say that it was it's possible that the ITC commissioners who voted for the ban were hoping that the president would jump in, <laughs> <laughs> um, and would, in fact were hoping that this would become a cause celebre, so to highlight uh, the fact that the system's fairly well broken. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really interesting. And uh, some people saw it. I think, you know, South Korea said that it was a nationalistic move, but it was very hard to understand the, AT, the ITC's original ruling. It's almost like, and this patent stuff is really complicated. It makes very little sense, but it's almost like if you decide to build a community pool and you get all sorts of resources to help you build a community pool, but your only requirement is that you have to let everybody in the community reasonably swim in that pool. And you tell this one family that they can't come in unless they let you go over and soak in their hot tub that's when it starts to become difficult. And, you know, Samsung benefited by these patents becoming part of the standard, which means that every phone that wants to use the network or uh, conform to, like, basic usefulness as a device has to use these patents. And what Samsung and Motorola have also been doing is suing over these standards, essential patents, and requesting proprietary patents. Apple didn't offer their patents for standards. They're not required to license them reasonably in exchange for that. And it's egregious enough in the EU that they're being investigated for it in a sort of an antitrust investigation. But in the US, they approved it at first. So I think you know that's, that's a fairly accurate assessment of why the administration had to reverse it. I mean, this is such a complicated case, and I've kind of avoided um, getting into the as, as I usually do with patent cases, lawsuits, that kind of thing, because <laughs> it's so complicated. Um, but I thought I'd bring this up because it certainly is a big story. And, yeah, on the surface, you might say, well, the president uh, intervened to advantage an American company over a Korean company. But it, I, I think when you dig into it, it's not that's not the case. Yeah. And Apple does have some standards patents, and if they ever sued over them and the president vetoed it, I mean, that would be the, I would approve of that just as right. patents in general are, you know, a horribly broken thing. But when you have a patent as a standard and everybody has to use it, like you're forced to use it if you want that device to exist, then you have to start being very careful how you regulate that industry. Yeah, Frand is a very good thing for us as consumers. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you know, you wouldn't have a variety of choices for phones, for instance. And it's good for Samsung because otherwise someone else's uh, technology would have been chosen and they'd have the benefit of massive licensing fees for their patents. Right. By the way, Samsung is going to be, according to rumors, uh, making components that will go in the new iPhone chip. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from code in iOS 7 about a uh, A7 iPhone chip in the uh, XML. Apple Samsung DPTX controller SL S5L8960X. <laughs> Exclusive space modulator. <laughs> the binary language yeah. of... <laughs> I love it. Uh, according to a 9 to 5 Mac, that's a leap over the S5I8950X or the S5I8955X. 
uh, th which were respectively the A6 and the A6X. So an A7 chip in the uh, in the new iPhone. Is it a 5S or a 5C? And why do both. people say C? It's, yeah. it's both. C both. is for cheap? Color. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but the color one will be the cheap one. It'll be less expensive. Yes. I think, I, I'm sure Apple will come up with three reasons why, the, what the C stands for. <laughs> it stands for, well, someone actually sent me a tip saying the S must have stood for Steve and now the C is going to stand for Cook. Well, the S stood a, for <laughs> three different things, right? It yeah. stood for Speed and 3GS or something. It stood for Siri in the 4S. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it ever stood for Steve, but they, they nope. say Steve because Steve died right before the 4S came out. But yeah, there's... Uh, it is. There are very few companies in the world that can produce the kinds of chips that Apple needs in the quantity of the iPhone production, hundreds of millions of units. So it's not surprising. I thought Italy's you were going to say there are very few companies in the world that can produce the kind of idle speculation and rumors that <laughs> Apple produces. Well, that too. That's, that's, that's the too. third uh, speculation. <laughs> Oh, but I mean, like, uh, Samsung is also a conglomerate, and people forget that it's not one company. It's like a Kiretsu in Japan where they have multiple right. branches. And while there is, you know, while what happens with one branch might affect another branch, there's still Intel's not going to make these chips, so they're going to have to go somewhere to get them made. So we are at beta five. I mean, we're we're pretty far along, despite the developer uh, the, the downtime of the dev center and so forth. We're pretty far along. Are we? Do you think at this point? You, I don't know if you've seen it. If you have, you, I know you can't say. Uh, I have not. I would say even if I had, I couldn't, but I can, so I won't. But um, does that seem like we're now done? Are we ready to manufacture? Mm, Can't be too probably. much longer if they're going to come out in September. Uh, probably not. Uh, I've, I've, from what I've read through publicly available sources online, <laughs> uh, there, there's, there's, it's, it's not ready for consumer use yet. There's still, there's still a couple of, I wouldn't say show stopping problems with it, but things that really have to be ironed out, especially if you're going to go from an installed user base of in the six, in the low six figures or high five figures to an installed user base in the tens of millions. Right. But you, that, you know, there is a, there is a kind of a lead time where you have to start putting it on the phones. Um, yeah. You know, Microsoft used to do this when they were uh, putting out copies of Windows 8. They called it the Gold Master back when you actually Apple put it does up. the same thing. Do they call it a Gold Master? Yeah. yeah, and it almost always gets delivered to developers the day of the announcement event. <laughs> yeah, developers are the last. Yeah. <laughs> but but to manufacture, it's got to go at some point sooner than later if they're cranking them out now. In other words, if you want to have 5 million phones ready on ship date, presuming that ship date is somewhere around six weeks from now, which I think is not unfair. You're making them now, and you you got to put the uh, OS on it while you're making it, don't you? There's usually six to eight betas. Like If you look, if, if past behavior is an ah, indication of okay. future behavior, there's usually six to eight betas, and then the last one usually is a while, and then the Gold Master comes out on ship date. So I wouldn't be surprised if they stuck to that pattern, either the next one or the one after that, yeah. unless there's any showstoppers. And there have been showstoppers in the past where they had to reissue a, even a Gold Master. Uh, so it happens, but if you know the next one or the one after that, or you know maybe the one after that, but you know, we're, we're getting and, into the and, home. And special. one 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 should remember that it's not unusual to get a new iPhone and have to do an update right away. So if there is a showstopper, that can be patched. Yeah, yeah, that's part of the activation process. That's right. why sometimes it takes an awful long time right. because it's doing a patch. That yeah, right. So what do we think? Uh, is there any insight to be gained from the fact that we're at beta five? <laughs> it's. It's on schedule. I mean, they they yeah. they were a week. And I hate to say late. People say they're late, or people assume that Apple releases a new beta every month, every second Monday, and that's because. Often they do, but they've gone weeks without them. They've done right. them on Saturdays. They did it on a Tuesday today. Yep. They waited one week. They've waited three weeks. So in general, every second week is a good pattern, and they're almost exactly on that right now. Yeah. Also, a lot of people tend to be confused when they don't see a lot of visible movement in the betas. Uh, they really want to see, oh, but they, well, there's going to be another beta in which everything is no longer translucent and the, <laughs> the, there's no longer a layer thing and they put the sharing icon back the way it was before because that's obviously what they're going to be doing soon. It's just such a, a, a tremendous undertaking for any like full digit release of iOS, even if it weren't as monumental as iOS 7. Uh, that we're going to see a lot of updates in which we don't see a lot of new behaviors, but we're seeing that a lot of, you know, there, there, there are a lot of people under the hood making sure that the, that battery life is going to be exactly what it should be, uh, that connectivity is going to be exactly where it should be. I mean, reliability has to be absolutely perfect out of the gate or else this will be the first failure of a of failure to launch of any uh, iOS update that Apple's ever released. 
And they usually have a few features that they only show off at the event that has to do with new hardware, whether it's, you know, a pan. They, they like, you know, um, Phil Schiller will have his demo and Craig Vigarig will have another demo. And there'll be one or two things that are just announced there that'll have to go on the new phones that we won't usually don't get leaked in the beta. So I mean, mm -hmm. there's still a cycle ahead of us. They know that people are, doing, are, are going to be disassembling the entire thing, looking for references to things that don't exist yet. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> like the i7. Uh, I mean, and it's, I, I, whatever the chip is called. Yeah, I've been looking at it because um, I have to write a review like everybody else does for when it's actually public. And I've been looking at the screenshots on Apple and watching the videos and, and looking at the betas. And uh, it's they, they have done tremendous work. I can I, some of those screens are just so beautiful. I literally sit there staring at them sometimes. I don't I think people got confu not confused, but I think they were distracted by the icons on the home screen and haven't had a chance to look at the entire OS yet. But literally not a pixel is the same. They've redone everything from top to bottom. And it's some amazing work. Yeah, if you love it's, frosted glass, you'll love iOS yeah. seven. Well, so that and and that's the that's the that's the problem that a lot of people are getting distracted. The Renee picked a very good word. They're getting distracted by what are very very big visual differences. Right. Without, but people aren't. People really need to understand that this isn't a case of simply freshening up the user interface. This is their first. It's, it's as close to a do over as Apple will, I think will ever do of iOS. It's the the idea that we are now several years wiser. We've had several ten of millions of users worth of experience to draw on and also we've grown as creators and as a company on what our goals are going to be for the next five years and rather than go the windows route which is, which is to keep bolting on bolting on bolting on it's time for us to now reinvent this uh, reinvent this uh and remaster it for another generation of users it is that big Craig Hockenberry, who uh, is at the Icon Factory, did an informal poll uh, of iOS developers, and 95% of those who responded said, we are going to update apps to not only be compatible with, I presume, cosmetically and physically, but also to take advantage with of uh, iOS 7 features. 95%. Oh, yeah. oh, that's, well, that's, no, the, the excitement, I, I, it's like, it's, I, I think that a lot, a lot of developers got whiplash between iOS 6 and yeah. iOS 7, between all the disappointment and heartbreak and hurt genuine hurt that they've experienced with iOS 6, particularly with iCloud versus iOS 7, where lots of problems that they've been grappling with for a couple of years are now very, very easy to implement and execute uh, in iOS 7 now. And also, let's not forget that when Apple proudly talks about the number of developers who are updating their apps for iOS 7, realize that there is a built-in time bomb that, well, it's, it's like all, they're, they're, it's, it's like Apple's telling everybody, now, real, now don't worry, old developers who don't want to lift a finger to, to take advantage of our new lovely iOS 7, who want to stay complacent and not expend that minimal amount of effort that only Almost anybody would certainly want to do your iOS 6 apps will run just fine on modified on iOS 7. And to make sure they run, they run perfectly fine, we're going to make sure they look like crappy iOS 6 apps. <laughs> well, welcome. this is interesting because in the same poll, 48%, uh, almost half of the developers said we are not going to offer backward compatibility. If you start you, put, you know, implementing iOS 7 features, um, you may actually make a new, uh, in effect, a new app that is not compatible. Yeah. And that's the uh, big challenge. It's a big it, challenge. Now, uh, iOS 7 will not run on any of the first three iPhone models up through the 3GS uh, or any of the iPod Touches except the fifth generation. Um, I'm not sure what the iPad situation... Uh, iPad 2 and, and two older. 2 and up. You can't do it on the first iPad. Application, right. Um, so people who have that older hardware may not only... Uh, are not only going to be left out in the cold with iOS 7, they may be left out in the cold with some of their apps. Uh, yeah, yeah, but how, how old is the, is the 3GS at this point? Well, it's, it's old. I'm not saying, although, it's, it's, uh, remember, it was I mean, free in the store. Uh, you know, a lot of people got... Up until yeah. 2012. Yeah, it's last year. So some people, you know, saying, oh, I want a free phone, got a 3GS. Mm. But the old uh, apps will still work for as long as, I mean, conceivably yeah, right. as long just as... just don't update. <laughs> well, you yeah, can't. I don't, if, you can't. Update. And... and and, and, to, and to be realistic, if you're if you either a got the three GS when it was brand new, what, was it four years ago, three years, three years ago, three years ago, I think. Right. Uh, if you, then probably you're due for a new phone anyway. If you got the three GS last year because it was the free phone, you're probably not in the business of spending hundreds of dollars on apps. So you probably probably don't have a lot of investment in there anyway. And also, this is a very positive. It's a very Apple move that is can do things that they're very very positive for the platform they're not afraid to simply say that we cannot keep supporting every old user no apple's and famous we, and we, for not doing that 
Well, I, I wouldn't say they're famous. No, I, because I have Macs that are still in service years and years and years after a Windows machine would have been taken to the recycling center. So Yeah, but don't put iTunes they, on it. Uh, that's just a good rule in general. I don't think <laughs> iTunes. Uh, but, 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 but I'm saying that at, at some point, if you really want to keep control of your platform and control the platform includes the ability to keep improving that platform, at some mm -hmm. point you have to tell somebody mm -hmm. that be very, very happy with, them, with the, your phone as it was in 2012 right. because that hardware, that operating system, and that software will continue to run in that combination right. as long as electrons can course through those circuitries. But as soon as you want to put in a new operating system or a new, uh, or a new piece of software on there, that's the point where we're going to have to say, you got four four years out of this phone. You got five years, six years out of this computer. We help, we we kept this basic this basic uh, operating system intact uh, from 2007 until 2013. And now, after six years, we are okay with breaking with the old and uh, and uh, moving forward with the new. That's exactly the verbiage I've been using for years <laughs> with PCs. You know, yeah, your PC is going to run exactly yeah. as it did the day it came from the factory yeah. if you don't put anything new on it, right? Yeah. The, the, the tough thing the, here, Leo, is the uh, – and Craig Hockenberry's partner, Gideon Mayhew, did a very interesting blog post um, a couple weeks earlier where he was explaining how much effort these companies – I mean, they're redoing – they just redid Twitterific um, yeah. 5, and they're, they're redoing it from scratch It's basically again. a new app. And people are not going to be willing to pay for that kind right. of an update. So they basically have to do all this work for free. And you scale that across all the apps because they're going to want to be in the App Store the first day. They Taking time to do the redesign takes time away right. from adding new features that people would pay for. So it becomes an expensive proposition for developers with no real clear yeah. idea on how to you know pay for all that stuff. And that, that was a lot of the, the, the herd of iOS 6. There was, they, Apple forced developers to do a lot of work that was productive and intense work, but did nothing to fuel the engines of empire, so to speak. It did nothing to put more money in their pocket, and yet they still had to pay their developers uh, and use limited resources to pretty much just maintain parity with what they had before. But it's, I mean, and also, but the, the other factor about this is that the iOS community and the Mac community, they're people who understand the idea of novelty, uh, of, of new features and moving things forward. One of the reasons I think one of the reasons why Windows 8 has been getting so much so much drubbing over the past year is not because it's a poor operating system. I think it's a very very good OS, but the Windows community is not a community that wants something that works better or new. They want they just want that rental car that where the the gear shift is right where it is. The radio stations are exactly where they are. It's easy to get at the air conditioning. You put the key in, it starts, and after that, don't give me anything that's going to confuse me or force me to learn anything new. Uh, so that's another advantage of buying into the Apple ecosystem. It's a community of people that are going to, if they have access to Tumblr and Twitter, they will kick up a royal fury because you changed the shape of their sharing button. But they're on the whole, they're okay with uh, being discomfited for about a week if it means that two weeks later they feel as they, they, they no longer have that sort of... Uh, uh, that 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 sort of abs that, that sort of abject longing they might have had for a certain feature they found in a Windows phone or a certain feature they found in an Android device. So long as it keeps uh, iOS vibrant and vital and a step ahead of everybody else, a penny of pain, a, a, a pound of comfort. So Andy, you got a uh, Moto X on Thursday. <laughs> Is there anything you see in this phone, like say, for instance, the? Uh, I mean, they did some really interesting hardware oh, to support lots. Always on, uh, lots, always listening lots, without lots. Uh, depleting the battery. The battery life's very good, even though it's a fairly that. small battery. Do you see yeah. anything in that phone that Apple's going to have to sit, sit up and pay attention to? Uh, just the I, I, my phones in the other in the other room. Where I could show you. Just the the thing that I'm loving about it over the past five days is just the ability that because of the OLED screen, it can keep pixels alive without burning through the battery, and the ability to simply take it out of the pocket, your pocket and instantly get information. Mostly, I'm talking about the information that says no, there's no need for me to wake this up. I, I know what a I know what time it is, or B there are no notifications on the screen that make me think that oh gee there's something going on I need to check about. If I take it out of the pocket and I don't see you know my my mail message light lit up or or other apps lit up, I can put it right back in my pocket and it works just fine and 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 not even have to bother to un, uh, not not even bother to unlock it or wake it up. Also the. The other gesture I'm using, I'm using a lot is just the ability to, you know, you, you want to take a picture. How many taps do you have to go through? How many taps and swipes on any phone, including the iPhone 5, before you get a working camera? 
uh, the iPhone 5 is probably near the top of the heap because it does put the the camera as a slider on the on the lock screen. But that's still a whole bunch of things you have to do before you actually have a, a waiting camera. With the Moto X, again, it has one processor that does nothing but listen, for, but understand the context that you're about to use it in, so it can light up at exactly the moment you need it. So if you just take it out of your pocket and give it give it like a twisty shake, Here, I'll show you. By the time by the time you hold it up to your face, it's it's a camera that's ready to go. So you just go and like those, this. And then you could take a picture within seconds. Now, admittedly, it's not as good as the iPhone five. I don't think the cameras. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. Top it's of the a, line. It's kind of middle. It's middle it's, it's an ad, it's a, it's adequate. a it's a it's a very exactly a very adequate camera. Yeah. Which is not something you put a you know four star. <laughs> adequate. So it's Andy, adequate. It One and a half thumbs uh, up. Uh, but but yeah, the fact those, that you can launch it so those, fast those is in of, some ways a a uh, makes up for the fact that it's not the greatest camera in the world, because I could get pictures that I would just wouldn't get any other way. Yeah, I, I just I, I just have to say that just that ability to give me information without having to wake up the phone completely, that's a huge thing. Yeah. It's just it's so it's something that I use several times a day and I appreciate several times a day. The ability to know that the battery level is low without having to <laughs> wake it up and why isn't it waking up? Oh, that's because I forgot to turn it. That's, that's because I was using it a hell of a lot and I haven't charged it in two days and now the battery's dead. It's no, you see that little red icon with a battery that's really, really just crying and whimpering and begging and pleading me, but that means I should plug it in. Does uh, Apple these, start to have to look at what Siri's doing in the face of Google Now and in the face of always listening and, and start to pay attention to this? I mean, one of the advantages uh, Motorola had, they kind of stealthed this, is that they were able to redesign the hardware to support this feature. It, it's not like you could just turn it on in any other phone Yeah, uh, because well, it's a, it's it's just a would feature, kill the battery. It's a feature. Um, what the... the, the and the thing about the Moto X is that it is more of a promise to me than a product because it's it's kind of like it looks like it's delayed. It's kind of old hardware. They had to kind of Frankenstein the processor. But everything coming after this is sounds like it's going to have all this built in. So it's just going to be a feature right. that doesn't require everything, all the heavy lifting Moto did. But the new chipsets will just work with always listening and just well, work that's with interesting. All of these so you think so? So maybe an i7 will or an a7 will. It's a companion core, as far as I understand it, and I'm like uh, I spent well, I can, an hour I can fill talking. you in. It's the it's 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 a dual core uh, S4 Pro, the uh, ARM chip. There's quad core Adreno uh, GPUs. They really focus. Yes. What it is is, and this is what Apple's done for years. They designed the hardware to support what they wanted the software to do, and then it has two DSPs uh, for natural language always listening. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure where the accelerometer goes. I'm not sure if it's if it's what part of the phone is watching the accelerometer. Um, yeah. but it, but it's true that it does not deplete the battery. So. Yeah. I mean, I have not, I was prepared for the, there to be a big cost to this and no, it's one of the, in, in terms of uh, user facing battery life, it's one of the longest lasting devices that I, that I've Android devices that I've used. It's, it's very iPhone. There, there are a lot of 18 hours in my, in my, uh, last yeah, four days. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it will, it's very, it's very iPhone like to me in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, a part of one of them being the the fact that I don't worry about battery life as much as I do uh, with other Android phones. Well, that's why I, I bring it up because I think this is naturally going after that more than a lot of Android phones, kind of going after the iPhone crowd, both in design uh, as well as uh, software. Yeah. I do wish that they would be more um, like when Apple states, you know, ten hours of battery life. They mean that you're 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 either doing Wi-Fi or watching a video for ten hours. A lot of other manufacturers will say twenty-four hours of battery life. That's assuming you're sleeping for eight of them. Um, and Andy gets like Andy gave the realistic figure for that battery life. It's just we get these questions. Oh, how come Apple's not doing twenty four hours of battery life? Well, no or, one you know, is. <laughs> yeah, no one is. It's just they're mis they're, they're right. not they're stating the figures using a different measure, right. and that right. creates confusion. Mm -hmm. I should yeah. mention because a number and, of people in the chat room are all uh, in a, t a Twitter about this. Uh, during the uh, Twitch show, it kept waking up, and I had trained it with a strange cartoon voice, and I'm not sure what <laughs> was going on, but I haven't. I, I retrained it with my normal voice, and I haven't had it do that ever again. So I'm not sure why, and it's been out, you know, it was out on the table uh, through most of this show. Yeah. I don't understand why it was turning on by itself. That was just a weird artifact. It does not, as far as I could tell, do that normally. Yeah. And for, for, for my review, I've been playing with a lot. There, there's, there's a phrase I'm trying to fine tune because it doesn't really work in the current draft. But you, you, know, you know the old joke about how in paradise, all the, the police officers are the, yeah. the police officers are all, all, are all English. Yeah, and right. the, and the, the, yeah, exactly. the chefs yeah. are all Italian. <laughs> right. I, I think that in the I'm, I'm impressed enough with the Moto X. That I know that the phone version of that joke, Moto X is in there somewhere as they do. Some, <laughs> they do certain things so well that you want part of that in every in every uh, in every phone that's out there. And one of the one of the other interesting aspects, and this does affect this, this does impact like the iPhone, is that um, when I reviewed the iPhone five, 
like everybody else, of course, I had to talk about how beautiful it was and how how slim it was and how light it was. But then you have to take a deep breath and say, and that will make all the difference in the world for about four days until someone's the, the owner's package from Amazon comes and they put the $11 silicone rubber case over it, which everybody does right. because everybody wants to either they tell them they tell themselves they want to protect their phone. But really what they want to do is personalize that phone. So it doesn't really and in the end, it almost doesn't matter what a, a phone looks like because someone's going to put it in a case. I really think that that's sort of like the 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 the, the stealth device. The, the stealth weapon is the customized customizability of the Moto X, because people want a phone that looks exactly the way they want it to, and the ability to put any combination of colors for three different components of the uh, of the of this device. That's for, for people who are firmly in the that 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 consumer category where. I believe that these seven phones, including the iPhone and 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 six others, are e each of these could do as well as each other as what I want a phone to do. Oh wait a minute, you mean that this one I can have it in pink, silver, and uh, and orange? Great, I'll get the one in pink, silver, and orange. But I can't have it today, so just give me the black one on the shelf. <laughs> well, you can't have it at all in Canada. <laughs> well, I think Rogers is going to get it, but I think the car stuff is all exclusive to AT and T, if I recall. It's a, yeah, it's and you know, yeah. Motorola was coy about how long that exclusivity lasts. It may be a month. It may not be a real. I long think I, I really, I really think that that's a way for them to ramp up their to, to get the final yeah. squirrels out of their yeah. their procedure for doing that four day shipping. I don't think that's going to be a lifetime AT and T exclusive. Oh God, exclusive. no. I think that I think that it's going to be as soon as they real they get a handle on here's how well this system can actually handle real consumers with their uh, with with their demands. That's when they know how they're going to have to scale it up and when they how they can adapt the process. I don't think that's going to be an exclusive. No, it, again, it's, it's, no, they said it's, 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 it's cool not going to be a permanent exclusive. It's a short term exclusive. Right, right. The always listening thing to me, Leo, is really interesting because we've talked before about, you know, uh, Google now in many ways is very far ahead of Siri and Google controls their own technology. They can do things like put it on board so that the, a lot of the voice parsing haps on, happens on device while all of Siri's has to go to the Internet. They can do this always listening. And it'll be interesting to see what Apple does with that because they are licensed from Nuance. They are, you know, in Andy's backyard building their own voice technical center. But how far ahead will that be? And will an A7 processor include separate coprocessors to handle? things like this is it something apple is able to do given the technology they have access to and is something that they want to do and i think you know either this year or that or next year they'll have to answer that question right and, and apple is already already a couple steps ahead of google in uh, in a couple important ways because google now is fantastic it can do that magic uh, the, that magical thing like the first time that you have google now on your phone and you travel and you get off the plane and you reflexively, I need to know like where to go for this. I need to know when my next appointment is. I need to go. And then you wake it up and say, oh, there are exactly the information that I wanted exactly at the time when it makes sense for me to have it. Okay, then. Well done. Uh, but Siri, uh, Siri is a lot more accommodating and it's a lot more, uh, it, it helps, it does a, a much stronger way of forging an emotional connection to the product because you actually have a conversation with Siri. You don't remember, uh, with Google now, you have to, you can certainly add an item to your calendar, but you have to phrase it in exactly the right way. It's it's very peevishness, like peevish, like Alex Trebek, <laughs> in that if you do, if you put an extra S in there, it will tell you, I'm sorry, I, I can't accept that, that, that question. Uh, but with Siri, you can say, I'd like to you know, schedule an appointment and then we'll walk you through, okay, when? And if Thank you Alex. phrase it in a number of different ways, it'll walk you through it. Uh, it's it's more of an interface to an entirely new user. It's more of a, it's more of a way to interact with an entirely new user interface for many applications than simply a control panel that tries to put the right information in front of you when you want it. Yeah. And I think that Andy nails it absolutely there because and it shows the difference in those companies. Siri is almost like a Pixar character where Google now has a lot of interesting functionality. One absolutely nails the service and the other absolutely nails the experience. And we could just get them closer together so they could breed. It would be fantastic. <laughs> Does it? Does I it, think. I think. I think. I think you've actually. You've actually put. Your, this is going to be like the next big Pixar movie. We'll have like where there are two warring factions. <laughs> like Siri is the is the princess of of Apple Land, and and Gordon Noli is the is the <laughs> prince of, of Google, and they, they they mustn't be together and get they're drawn together by love and by the, the their, their mutual desire to serve users. If only they're 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 stupid brutish king and queen <laughs> would simply stop stop fighting and let it'll love be like happen. Saga. <laughs> Let's see. You know which 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 one? Would, I'm sorry. You I, I, given given that I, I've just come back from two days at a, at a comic con. Now I've got me thinking. Okay, which character would be whom? I think that, uh, <laughs> which one has wings? Which one has horns? Horns. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Um. 
So, yeah, I mean, I, I when I look at the Moto X, I feel like this is a phone that is aimed right at the iPhone audience and the iPhone market. And I think that people going into AT&T in particular, but into other stores, will be kind of looking at the side by side. Now, it, it remains to be seen whether the phone companies push them at all. Because that's well, one problem. Five hundred billion in marketing money, Leo. Yeah, a half a billion. Lot. Some of that money is going to go to uh, AT and T uh, sales yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and I mean, the, you're, you're you're right in that. There's there's a lot of iPhone influence there. I was talk. I got, had uh, some meetings with uh, senior uh, uh, Motorola executives uh, after after the event, and we're just having a conversation, not about tech stuff, but about like thoughts and processes. And they were saying they were, they really spoke very very. Uh, uh, convincingly about how when they were bought out by Google, they felt as though they wanted to take a step back and figure out, you know, we're, instead of a company that makes 60 different phones, we want to have a purpose. <laughs> you know, we want to, we want to have some, some, some ideals that we're going to be working towards and that this, then they spoke, they speak of the Moto X as is the first, I wouldn't, I'm paraphrasing heavily to, for comedic effect, but it's not, not completely untrue to say that this is the first one, first phone that Motorola has, has, has made since they had a set of ideals and a purpose in mind. Right. I'm going to be in a quandary because uh, I now have a uh, update for, you know, I've crossed the two-year threshold on one of my AT&T phones. Yeah. And I they also sell the, the Lumia 1020. I got. I guess. I gotta say that this is uh, this is a hard, hard year. Yeah. That's, it's. I'm because... waiting till the iPhone comes out because it will really come down to Moto X, Lumia 1020, or yeah. iPhone 5s. I'm, I'm I'm keen to see what all all the rumors so far, and my rumor sources are nowhere as good as Renee's or 9 to 5 Max. But we we haven't been hearing a lot about a revolutionary new phone, but they can do a lot in the same casing by changing how they do their signal processing, changing right. their, their processing architect architecture. But I'm not, so far, we're not seeing something that will be so big that it would turn your head away from, well, how about this phone that has the greatest camera ever put inside, not just a yeah. phone, but a compact, compact size camera, <laughs> yeah. or this phone, which does not ruin the, the Android experience lest you customize it and is really, really useful even when you're not even waking it up. Do you, it's like... Uh, could I do without an iPhone for a two year from two years? If, if this would have been a, a this would have been a wonderful year for Apple to have, and just and just as we revolutionized iOS six by making iOS seven, we felt it was time for a new revolution in phone hardware. That's the, this is be the perfect time to make people not even. I mean, people have already forgotten about uh, about the Galaxy S four. It wasn't a really good update. It was. I, to, you know, I've already was, given given mine to I as I. It was a yeah. disappointment. I mean, I was from from even from the even from the first time I held that and think yeah. that okay, it's it's fine, but who cares? I mean, if but they but they have two or three competitors now that are just so solid. Just the ability to get a con to get the a very very close to a pure Android experience without having to buy an unlocked phone for six hundred fifty dollars and get it at a contract price. That alone is a very very big step for Android. So. I, I'm I'm really keen to see what Apple will do. Not that I don't think they ever do anything in response to anything, but when they are designing the next, choosing the, the priorities for the next big revision to the iPhone, and now they're doing it in an environment that has this level of competition to it. I'm curious to see what uh, what decisions they're going to be putting into uh, into that new hardware. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to, I'd love to see a thick phone with a, a camera that even kicks the Nokia's ass. Ah. And what's interesting too, though, is that the market is growing so big now, more and more regular phone users are becoming smartphone users. So more and more smartphones are just becoming phones for people right. that you'll start to see niches appear the way they, they do for any other widespread consumer product. I know the Kin tried that, but it was way too early, I think. And now you have the 1020, which, you know, it's, it's not really a mainstream phone. It's more of a phone that, you know, you need a smartphone, but you love cameras and otherwise maybe you'll get the 925 instead. And I think we'll slowly see more of those. And then where Apple exists with a unified product, or maybe one or two or three products in a world where Samsung is putting out however many and Nokia is putting out however many, I think becomes interesting as well. I think I think that's a little bit skewed, though. I think that the reason why we're seeing more smartphone users as a percentage of the total population is that we're seeing more smartphones that cost so such little mm -hmm. money that 
you can just go ahead and there, there, I think there's a there's a the the silent the, the, the silent but huge portion of the, of the phone market are people who I just want to walk out with a working phone. No, why would I spend two hundred dollars on something that I don't use? I don't feel as though I use as as much as as going to justify a two hundred dollar expense. But if you put if you if you put a, a, a what two years ago or a year ago would have been a two hundred dollar smartphone at the price of a fifty dollar flip phone uh, two years ago, sure they'll walk out with an Android and it's probably going to be an Android device because they're so mm -hmm. inexpensive. Right. That's also what's, what's skewing the, the numbers, I think, on Android uh, uptake. Oh, yeah. You're getting, people, you're getting people who are now Android users, but they don't care that it's Android. They just care that, okay, great, I got games. I've got, <laughs> I've got a camera. Got my Facebook I've got app. Facebook. Exactly. <laughs> I've got Instagram. But That's really true. I mean, it, 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 at, at some point from a normal user, it really does. It's the distinctions are minimal. Yeah. You, yep. don't, you don't, we as geeks pay a lot more attention uh, to this to distinctions than real people probably do. Absolutely, and that that's what's kind of informing uh, my 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 Lumia 1020 review is so late, or so much later than I that I that yeah, I. Yeah, you thought you were going to have it done last week. Yeah, it's the, and and the the reason why I was, I was held I was holding off and taking more pictures with it is that I was just so in love with this camera. I really needed the stars to fall from my eyes before I felt I could write things that were valuable about it. But one of the one of the other problems is that. Do people care about taking phenomenally good photos with their camera phone? Is good right. enough? Good enough? Is it, is it? And given that this phone costs two hundred ninety nine dollars, yep. which is a hundred bucks more than yeah. what every other really good smartphone is, is 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 charging these days, you have to have people who are motivated to want that kind of quality. And as much as I, I feel as though part of our our jobs as you know as commentators and writers and pundits is to you you know to tell these tell a the consumer that you're not dumb, you're not uns you're not unsophisticated is that it's just that we spend 10 hours a day thinking about this you spend 10 10, 10 hours a year when you're when your phone craps out right. on you and we we would just like to gently say that there might be some things you would really really like to have that you haven't even considered right now but it's just as possible for someone to say look i want to go back into the store where i got my last phone where i got my contract at i'm not going to switch carriers i'm just going to look for the phone that's as the most similar to the one that i already have that costs the least amount of money that i can i can spend and if it's got a if it's got a free uh fruit flavored case with it i will take the fruit flavored case and that will make my my buying decision for me yep but it's a cool camera please <laughs> at least think of i know it's windows phone i know it's windows phone but yeah, that's kind of a, a deal killer for me but you're right you no know, that's why i love so doing the radio show because it really brings me back to earth with normal people oh yeah for six hours a, a week i talk to normal people and i have to fray i have to really couch everything i say with that in mind you know you can't i can't say well you really want the s4 pro quad core you know that qualcomm 800 is very excited that snapdragon you can't no, say that let's Let's talk about application address space for a yeah. moment. <laughs> 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 yeah, here, on this table, yeah. we see. Yeah, you have to say, oh, you're going to like this phone because it's really fast to get to the camera. Things like that are what matter to people. Right. Uh, actually, maybe this is telling, maybe not. Uh, Apple uh, just or recently bought uh, Passif, which mm -hmm. is a, a Silicon Valley-based wireless chip developer. Uh, they make chips that use very little power. Uh, they include, a, including a radio that works with uh, Bluetooth LE, low energy. That's what your Fitbit Flex works with. Um, perhaps for, I mean, one would think for an iWatch, for a fitness or a health monitoring feature in iWatch. But maybe, maybe they could stick that in the phone too, you know. Bluetooth LE is really cool. The future is all yeah. about low power, Leo. Uh, well, that's clear. Just everything you can do with that technology. And every time I talk to a manufacturer of any sort of a mobile device, at some point, Bluetooth LE comes to the conversation, either in something that they, and usually not in something that's available right now, but they do a lot of wink, wink, nudge, nudge, saying that. And we've decided to implement this version right. of Bluetooth in case we want to use a certain lo super, lo super hyper location based or super personal networking grid <laughs> sort of solution sometime in the next year. It's like nobody wants to be left on the curb for this. There's so much. Just the oh god, you just look, come up with a list of everything you could do with the, with that technology, and you just run out of paper before you run out of ideas. The number of phones that are compatible with the uh, Bluetooth LE are, is fairly low. That's uh, um, I know that because of the Fitbit Flex. That's what it needs to uh, to support it. The Lumias do. The Galaxies that. do. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, the Galaxies have since S3. Uh, BlackBerry does. HTC One does, iPhone does. Do they? Uh, the That's wrong, does. I think. I think so. Does it? The oh, okay. iPhone Five, I think. Five does. Yeah. Um, 
but it's, it's a you know it's a short list. Uh, and I'm probably not at this point. The reason is because it's not at this point people are not that aware of it. But I think soon they will be. Yeah, the, uh, next year there are going to be so many devices that will that will change the way that a phone works if the if that phone uh, supports LE. That right. I don't think that it's 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 going to be like uh, a phone not supporting high speed Wi Fi or a phone yeah. you know not su not supporting audio over Wi Fi. Uh, excuse me, uh, audio over Bluetooth. It's just going to be something that is just going to come up with everything. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think we have covered all the big stories. You want to, uh, anything else you guys want to get in here before we take our break? New and FaceTime commercial, Leo. It's, oh, it's you want It pulls your heartstrings. The fa all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, and I, I didn't play, notice the commercial that uh, Nokia, Nokia, as they say in the commercial, has, is running to uh, counter <laughs> the uh, iPhone picture commercial. But let me, let me we'll do the FaceTime. They're going to have to do a Skype one now. <laughs> yeah, Skype will have to do one. Uh, if I go to apple.com slash ads. Or youtube.com slash apple. Oh, yeah. There you go. Let's do it that way. That's probably faster. I'm trying to decide between the 925 and the 1020 Andy. I'll ask 925 you 925's beautiful, too. Yeah. Uh, the 1020 is a actually, small screen, you know? Oh, 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 oh. It started playing right away. Let me, uh, let me go full screen. Do you think Apple will pull this show because we did this? No. <laughs> it's not unusual to go out and any time. I'm trying to mess up the audio so they can't key it. <laughs> nah, it's not cares. unusual. If they pull it, they pull it. <laughs> at any time. So it's got a bunch. It's all, oh, he blew a kiss to their girlfriend. It's like so, the camera in the music commercial before. Yeah, the first, the only thing I think about this is I never see anybody using FaceTime. <laughs> 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 it's... It's but nice. I mean, these are all people using FaceTime to talk to loved ones, to show them fireworks displays. They're, they're, they're in Planet FaceTime, Planet Apple commercial land. Yeah, it's a different Although, world. You know, two days ago, my little godchildren, who are four and seven years old, FaceTimed me from their traveling, and they were at a dinosaur dig, and they wanted to FaceTime and show oh. it to me. And it was pretty awesome. Oh, she's pregnant. Oh. <laughs> she's, she's six months along, and you didn't know? Wow. <laughs> Didn't notice that. <laughs> I have something to tell you, honey. <laughs> um, I very rarely see people using that. Uh, well, I rarely see people using Skype uh, video either. I just did a Google Hangout with video for the first. Uh, you know the new the new Hangouts where it's just like. So you've got Google doing it, you've got Apple doing it, you've got Skype doing it. A lot of companies doing it, but I think people there's less demand for video f calls than anybody ever thought i don't know why it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of demand for that uh i don't know the, the people who use it really use it a lot i mean i yeah I, I'm, that's true i'll, I'll grant you that it's like uh it really is the glue that is holding extended families together i mean when i visit my uh 83 83 and 84 year old uh aunts like they they have they the, re the reason why a lot, a lot of the reasons the reason why one of them like bought a new computer is because her old computer wouldn't run skype and with skype she gets to see all of her grandchildren every right week. so yeah i mean everyone at wwdc runs home to facetime their kids after the session oh really <laughs> <laughs> but the interesting thing with ios 7 and they announced this is there's going to be facetime audio so you don't have to just do a video call it's going to be their entry into voice over ip and it'll be apple only but people have been asking for that feature for a long time yeah that's the big problem with uh, facetime is it has to be apple yeah it's uh so if you use yeah. skype it's cross-platform if you use google hangout it's cross-platform it's multi-platform a multi lot of them like uh, google hangouts i still don't think it's on windows phone or blackberry yet <laughs> I yeah. don't call anybody who has Windows Phone or Blackberry. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't earned the platform label yet. A uh, nickname in our chat room says it's very big in the Asian culture. So it may be cultural. Remember, text messaging did not take off in the U.S. It happened overseas first uh, and became huge in England and Asia. Emotion. And then we caught on and uh, a few years later... Uh, it became mm. just as big here, so maybe that's just a, a cultural does, thing. Does that have does that have more to do with how difficult uh, the 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 difference in sending text yes. messaging in non Roman languages? Yeah, well, maybe, maybe also SMS it was inexpensive. Uh, why FaceTime? And, yeah, yeah, it was expensive and not interoperable for a long time. Well, and that's one of the, that's what hurt SMS. Yeah, very much yeah. like FaceTime, it wasn't interoperable. You had to have somebody who had the same carrier for you to text message each other or perhaps in asian cultures they don't spend quite so much time worrying about their hair as we do in the west well that's a 
That's for sure. <laughs> I, I almost went hatless today, then put the headphones on. Oh, okay, my hair's doing weird stuff. Now. <laughs> our show today brought to you by our good friends at audible.com. Audiobooks are a lifesaver. I was listening last night. Uh, it's how I go to sleep. It's how I drive when I commute. It's how I do the dishes and work out in the gym. I'm. Uh, it's great because it brought uh, books back into my life. Um, you know, for a long time, I just didn't have time to read. Or I would I would start reading in bed and I would I'd get a quarter of a page through and it'd be over. And it's hard to get through a book at a quarter page at a time. But uh, when I discovered audio uh, books in, uh, I think it was 2000, I subscribed to Audible for the first time. Changed my life. Changed my life. I just love Audible. And I've been telling people about it ever since. That's one thing that happens with Audible.com is people uh, are great evangelists for it. 100,000 plus Books, radio shows, comedy performances, lectures. They've got the great courses now, so you can listen to great college lectures. Um, all kinds of fiction and nonfiction, history. Right now, if you're a listener of MacBreak Weekly, you can get a free audiobook just by going to audible.com slash MacBreak. You'll be signing up for the gold account. First month is free. First book is free. Cancel any time in the first 30 days. You'll pay nothing, but that book is yours to keep forever. I have a feeling you're going to want to stick around, though. I, there's... So much good stuff. What are you listening to now, Andy? Andy always has great recommendations. Actually, uh, my, my, I'm revisiting a greatest hit because somebody on Twitter asked me, hey, what was that book that you recommended a, a, a while ago about this, this spy, true life, World War II oh, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It reminded me of one of my favorite audi Audible books ever. It's called Operation Mincemeat, which is a, a true story of espionage from World War II in which uh, the, uh, the Allies were going to be invading Sicily. But they needed to uh, they, they needed to uh, uh, convince the Nazis that, that the Germans that they were going to be invading Greece. I might have I might have that reverse, but whatever. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> right. So so th as part of like the counter and the, the the disinformation program, someone came up with this idea saying, "Well, we need to really convince them this is going to happen. So what if we get a dead guy?" And dress him up as a British officer, and like put papers on secret uh, the secret papers on him that in, that are like private communications, private le letters among the Allies, and indicating where the where the the fake inv the invasion is going to go. Uh, and then we just drop him off the drop him off the the ocean uh, by <laughs> near 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 where the Germans are fake a fake a a plane landing and create the impression that this guy was on a top secret intelligence miss, mission and oh my god what luck we've happened to have found these papers that tell us where their private secret uh, invasion plans are uh, and already it's a good idea but then to the but the only way i could increase how cool this story is now imagine the person who people who came up with this plan are implementing this had read way way too many spy thrillers <laughs> and thought that well if we can't just dress a guy up we have to we have to give him a backstory so let's visit this the tailor where he would have shopped at <laughs> and make sure we have some shirts made for him we'll have to go to a theater get some tickets oh we're, we're, but where was he going to the theater with ah he must have had a girlfriend so let's have this guy this this this, this girl from the typing pool pose as his girlfriend we'll take pick some pictures of her put that in his wallet it shows you what, what a whole bunch of weird people doing an impossible plan can actually have success uh, in the end because uh, it's not as though uh, the Germans redirected all their troops because they found this dead guy, but that certainly was a factor in it. And as bizarre and as unlikely and as crazy as it was, this plan actually worked. It was it, – I read a book many years ago when I was – I think I was in school called The Man Who Never Was. This is yeah. the same story, but this is a – I have to say this is much better written. It's uh, crazy. One, yeah. one of the people was like the the the, the person the, – the president – I think the president of the International Ping Pong Appreciation Federation Society. Uh, other <laughs> other people had been – other other of these officers had been picked up uh, wearing ladies, ladies' clothing and arrested, <laughs> uh, but then quietly like – why don't we just forget this never happened and we'll put you back into service? Uh, it was, it's like the, it's, it's, I'm waiting for like the deathbed confession of this author who said that, no, I just made the person, the person who, who the person who told me the story told me later on, he made it all up. Yeah. It does seem like that, I, doesn't it? It was, it was, it was too good a story to fact check. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. It isn't. It's true. Operation mincemeat, how a dead man in a bizarre plan fooled the Nazis and assured allied victory. I, I listen to a lot of history uh, on uh, Audible, a lot of fiction to uh, science fiction. Try it today. Audible.com slash Mac break. Time for our picks of the week. Let's start with you, Andy Anotko. Actually, can you come back to me because I have to grab Let's come back to you, Andy Anotko, and start with 
You, Renee Ritchie. <laughs> the, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts abstains, courteously. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, he's going to filibuster. Uh, I defer to the, the men, man from the Republic of Montreal, Canada, uh, sir. So I have, uh, I've been a fan of Pat and Quill's iPad cases for a long time. Um, several of my family members use it. They all like that it's sort of like the moleskin, old leather-bound book look because you take something that's so high-tech, so uh, aluminum and glass, and you put it in something that's fabric and wood, and it has, you know, a very nice duality. Uh, so they sent me one of their MacBook Air cases, and this one is exactly what you would imagine. Ooh. It's exactly what you would imagine in the iPad case, but because the MacBook Airs are so small now, um, you can just encase them yeah. in a similar thing. I've had now, that for, for my iPad for a long time, but I didn't know they made them for the, the Air. That's great. Absolutely. And this is for the 11-inch. They do make the 13-inch one, though I find the 13-inch one starts to get a little bit big for a book. Yeah. It's more like a, a one of those old Dungeons & Dragons tomes <laughs> if you get that big. But this is very nice. Uh, some people don't like putting a case on a computer because you don't read it like a book the way you do a tablet. It, but I've seen a lot of people use them. Um, a friend of mine has this on her 11-inch MacBook Air. It works wonderfully. You can carry it under your arm like a book if you don't want to take a bag with you. It'll protect it if you have it in a big bag. It'll become a stand for it if you want to elevate the keyboard and angle it if you're typing in a coffee shop or at a desk or at a restaurant. Um, and it's just, it's so beautifully. They're all handcrafted in Minnesota. They put a lot of care and energy into them. They have a variety of colors now. Um, and it's just a really beautiful product. So if you're looking for something that brings sort of old world charm to your latest and greatest technology, the Pad and Quill stuff is is really impressive piece of kit. Pad and Quill. Is that PQ? Yes. What is the website? Uh, padandquill.com. Padandquill.com. They even made a teeny tiny one for an iPad Nano as a joke and it took off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there are a couple other companies that make these, um, but th this looks nice, yeah. I've never uh, yeah, seen it for can, laptops. Yeah, this is the only one that I've seen for laptops yeah. as well. I know several. I know Dodo is very famous for making yeah, iPad Dodo started ones well. this, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my app, it just came out in the uh, App Store a couple of days ago, and it's kind of an interesting idea, and I thought it would be kind of fun to try it with the Moto X. Gives it uh, gives your Macintosh some Moto X features. It's called Dialog, six ninety nine in the App Store. It runs in the menu bar, little menu bar, and uh, you can actually make a phone call from your Bluetooth-connected uh, phone, um, which, which is kind of a, a cool idea. It uses Bluetooth to connect with the phone. It allows you to make uh, and, uh, and answer phone calls over your Macintosh. The Mac becomes the Bluetooth headset, in effect. Although, if you had a, a USB headset, you'd get better results. Um, so the audio quality is really going to depend on uh, having a, a headset. And remember, Bluetooth headset does not have the same super high fidelity that A2DP does. So uh, it'll sound like you're on a Bluetooth headset on the phone. Just you got to be aware of that. Um, but very cool. Let me, um, it'll, it wants my, uh, now I, I'm not sure we should show this because I don't want to show any uh, phone numbers. Let me just uh, try this without showing it on screen first and because I think it's going to show the, the phone number if I do. Yeah, it does, unfortunately. So I can look up. It knows my, it has my address book, and I can look up a name. Who could I call that it wouldn't matter? You call Starbucks call and ask me. for 300 lattes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just, I'll make a phone call, and, and you'll be able to see it happening here. So it's going to make an outgoing call using this phone to call this phone. How about that? And that's going through my uh, Macintosh, which is, which is kind of cool. So I'll just pick up the phone here. Oops. Uh, hi, this is Leo. Hi, Leo. Hi, Leo. How are you? How are you? Good. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst demo this ever. Is the worst demo ever. But the idea is but using Bluetooth, I used one phone uh, to call the other phone. You can record the phone call on the Mac, which is kind of cool. It uses the Mac's audio. Um, I think worth six ninety nine. a really good idea. It's called Dialog. And it's available um, now at the App Store. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Phoneception. Now, Andy Anako, <laughs> your pick of the week. Uh, actually, fitting in very nicely with Renee's picks. These are two iPad mini cases that I've come across over the past few weeks uh, that I've liked a lot. 
Um, the problem with the iPad Mini, the that magnetic cover that Apple sells does not work. It will not stick on. It's, it's just horrible. not very useful. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and I've had problems finding one that's exactly what I want it to be. Um, so I found two that I like. Uh, this is Hammerhead's uh, Capo. They call it the Capo case. And it is a completely enclosing hard shell, which I like because I like this is so small. I like to just toss it into whatever bag I have, not care what where it lands or what happens to it. And this will give you completely every surface protection. Uh, I've, there are other cases like this, but what I like about this is that it has the double hinge so that when you're actually reading with it, it'll fold, it'll fold absolutely flat. And also because there are some freaks out there, and yes, I say the word <laughs> freaks, uh, who actually will type on the uh, uh, on the iPad Mini, uh, it will also like fold into a stand that, thanks to this little catch uh, right here. So you it's can nice. have it like standing up uh, for movie viewing, uh, movie viewing or typing or anything like that. And like I said, the main, main idea is that I don't have to worry about this, the screen scratching. I don't have to worry about anything else. I can just toss it into an outside pocket and not care about it. Uh, for protection, uh, they're, they're people who they don't necessarily, they, they want it to still be an iPad mini, but they want it to have some protection against being dropped. Uh, and so newer tech has this brand new case they call the KX, which is one of these like glo rubber glove like snap on uh, slap snap on cases. So when you're using it, basically it doesn't really make it into anything other than what it is, which is a handy tablet with a screen on it. You don't have to open it. You don't have to do anything like that in order to access it. But now they say that this is you can throw this or excuse me, drop this down a flight of stairs. It is military drop tested. I will read the numbers for you. Certified mill at mill standard. 810G US uh, backed up of course by an authority no less uh, no less important uh, than a YouTube video uh, but <laughs> I'll, I, I will say that I did tentatively like drop this first on a carpeted floor and then on a tile floor and nothing happened or nothing or made a lot of it bounced a little bit. Uh, it is like a very, very like high density sort of a gel inside, very high density plastic. It seems to hold on. I don't have it on it right now, of course, but it seems to grip very, very closely. So it doesn't feel like you've got like a, you know, a, 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 a Christmas sweater, a Cosby sweater on your on your iPad. Uh, so I would. So, again, if you're just looking for something that doesn't impede the usability the iPad uh, mini, but gives it some drop protection. This is really nice. It's $69, I think. Uh, yeah, list of $69. Uh, the Hammerhead case is a lot less expensive. It's $29. I suspect it's not really drop resistant uh, as, as the other thing, but it will give you some hard shell protection uh, and basically keep that case from getting dinged up and, and banged up uh, when you uh, abuse it inside your case and stuff. And that's only $29, I think, list price. So two really cool uh, cool choices for two different kinds of uses, I think. Thank you, Andy Anako. Thank you, Renee Ritchie. Thank you for joining us. Renee Ritchie is at imore.com, where you can find the latest Apple news. He also uh, works at some other sites for other phones and companies, so don't mention and stuff. Those stuff <laughs> and uh you're still doing talk the talk uh, vision stuff we're at talk mobile it's talk off mobile? this week it returns next week with cloud and um since we're on an off week it, it, there's somebody else can i tell you about something else leo yeah we launched a new show called vector which is kind of one-on-one -on -one talk about really geeky subjects and yesterday i spent an hour talking to brian klug from anantech i love brian about, yeah he is fantastic yeah. battery life and uh, benchmark test and a lot of stuff that's been really controversial lately. I have to open Wikipedia when he talks about retina in terms of arc light minutes, yeah. but I always learn something from <laughs> Super it. Super so smart guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's Vector, the new so show from iMore. slash Vector. iMore.com yeah. slash Vector. Nick Arnott last week, uh, yeah. Guy English the week before, John Syracuse. You're getting the big names. That's awesome. We're trying to do super geeky stuff. Super geeky. They call him Super Geeky. Andy Anako writes for the Chicago Sun-Times, and someday soon his Nokia 1020 review will emerge in full flower. I can't say Nokia. I know, I can't either, but after I saw that video, I realized I was supposed to say Nokia. I keep, Nokia. I keep thinking of potato dumplings served in a red sauce or, <laughs> Nokia. or, a, or a Billy Crystal imitating uh, Sammy Davis Jr. I've got such Nokias for you, man. Nokia. Let me... Also, also, the American pronunciation is, I'm sorry, the official pronunciation. If an American thinks it's Nokia, it's Nokia. Let me play the ad. Just, <laughs> just the, change it. Just this Do is it. the audio. We didn't play the ad because I didn't want to, but this is the audio. And if you listen... Every day, more photos are taken on the iPhone than any other phone. But at Nokia, Nokia. we prefer to build for quality. 
not just quantity. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> Nokia. Say it as a Swedish chef, Leo. Then we'll Nokia. Nokia. I gotta get a, I gotta get a fin in here. Nokia fun. Nokia. Uh, thank you, Andy. Thank you, Renee. Thank you all for being here. We do Mac Break Weekly, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC on Tuesdays. First show of the week for me. And it's always a lot of fun. I'm so glad you watched. If you can watch live, it's always good to do that. But if you can't, we make on-demand audio and video available after the fact of all of our shows at our website, twit.tv. In this case, twit.tv slash m a b a w. But you can also uh, get it from iTunes or wherever you subscribe to podcasts, Instacast, Pocket Cast, Dog Catcher, whatever the P, you know, podcaster of choice is, Stitcher. We're on them all. Kalika. Thank you, uh, Renee. Thank you, Andy. Thank you all for watching. Now get back to work. Time's over.